Welcome to Terrific Tuesday. It is terrific because my friend Vicki Lawson is here and you brought a Melvin. gentleman extraordinaire. A gentleman. A gentleman that's extraordinaire. A... Can you introduce our guest? Sure. That, that sounds good, gentlemen. Gentleman extraordinaire. <laughs> and he is the epitome of a gentleman too. Yes. That's uh, Mr. Melvin Clout or Chief Clout from the Clout Indian family that uh, sang for many, many years and is well known throughout our area as well as the world. And you know, Vicki, he doesn't look a day over 79, does I he? know, but he just turned 90. <laughs> I heard a rumor, he just turned 90. He sure did. I'm well into my 90th, 91st year. Wow, wow. Can we talk a little bit about your connection with Vicki, how you chose her to be your co-host? My, um, my wife Margie, that I was married to for 66 years, had passed away. We used to run the road that run in front of uh, her friend's flea market. Flea market, mm -hmm. yeah. And we'd run by there, and every time we'd go by, Marjorie would say, "I want to stop in yeah, there." She did. Mm -hmm. I want to stop in there. Mm -hmm. So finally, one day we stopped in there, and I sat out in the car, and she went in. Mm -hmm. Sounds she, like a man, doesn't it? Does, and, does sounds it? just <laughs> like a, you're just a common man. Right, and she <laughs> she spent about an hour in there. <laughs> And then she I came. Can do that. <laughs> then she came out and she said, "That is the most unusual place I've ever been in. They've got everything and anything, and they also have a Southern Gospel booth in way right. in the back side." Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the next time we went by there, I um, I went ahead and went in with her, mm -hmm. and uh, there was no one in there but a gentleman at the booth, and I don't know. I can't remember what his name was. Probably Steve. Yeah, <clears throat> but he was there. We talked with him, and then I went back in the back, and and um, and that's how I got acquainted with uh, with Vicky. I tell you, that little gospel booth meant the world to a lot of people. It certainly did, and I miss that a I'll lot. I'll tell you, when we donated that piano, yes. I said our goal was to make sure that that piano continued to be played. And I think Morris Stansel was one of the first he people was. to go by there and play it. Mm -hmm. And it was just, we wanted it there to be there to be used because Miss Betty had, had played that at church. For over 50 years, she was our pianist right. at the church. Mm -hmm. And so it was important to us that that music continue coming out of the right. piano. Yes, and it did. Awesome. it did. We had a, when we'd have open houses and different things, we'd have different people come in and play and sing, mm -hmm. or sometimes just during the business day, people would come in and they would want to know if they could play the piano, and we mm -hmm. said sure. Yeah. And it was always a great time, and God yeah. always blessed even in the little times like that too. So awesome. But uh, from there, uh, Southern gospel music is pretty much controlled by men. Mm -hmm. Uh, here lately, they've decided to kind of in, include some women in it. But if you go through the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame, there's very few women in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I kept getting uh, the TV program just keeps singing. Is uh, in October we'll we'll be going into our 14th year, which is the longest running Southern Gospel Music program on record. Mm -hmm. and, and so I used to get requests. Well, why don't you interview? See, I don't interview anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's strictly uh, Southern Gospel music. The secret right. to it is the Southern Gospel music. Mm -hmm. And um, so I kept getting requests. And so it, I got a brainstorm. Why don't I bring in a female co-host? Mm -hmm. And I... You uh, picked a good one. You <laughs> picked a really good one. But I, I, the, I've got three programs where uh, Renee mm -hmm. was my mm -hmm. co-host. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Renee passed away. Mm -hmm. So it left, left me with, uh, with a decision to make. So uh, Vicki, there, there are... There's a misnomer out there, Sherry, that um, that that he's a self-made man. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. There's also a misnomer out there that uh, 
somebody can pick themselves up a, by their bootstraps <laughs> and be successful. Mm -hmm. But that is not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, my 90th year of living, going into my 91st, uh, I can say that I can pick out hundreds of people that had have, have made a a mark on my life Absolutely. to become who I am in Christ Jesus and there is there is and I, I don't I, I'm not saying this because Vicki is sitting here but Vicki has meant more to me spiritually than any besides my family my parents mm -hmm. I mean she is just uh, she's so meticulous in what she does. Uh, a ministry of kids with school bus going at what a 29th 29th year. 29th year. I start yes. on. I start yes. a week from today. Yes. Number 29. Yeah. 29th yeah. year, and uh, Vicky also she has not only dealing with kids, but she has to deal with some irate parents. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Very true. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, and then she teaches a Sunday school class. And some, sometimes when we go into our program, the beginning of our program, Sherry, um, Vicki knows what she's going to do. When the camera comes on, I never know what I'm going <laughs> to say un until I open my mouth. Very true. And, and <laughs> many times I look over at Vicki and it's like she's... She, it's like a deer staring into the headlights. She, <laughs> what I don't am I going to have to deal with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, uh, Vicky has really been a blessing to me. It's mm -hmm. uh, and also to the TV program. Mm -hmm. uh, Vicky is probably one of the most unusual people I have ever met. She's amazing. She, uh, She's pretty awesome. She well, teaches both of you. She awesome. teaches a Sunday school class, and. Uh, she has a future ministry that I know she doesn't even know where exactly. it's going, but exactly. by faith, mm -hmm. right. the, it'll, it'll come to light. Mm -hmm. um, being in my 91st year, I, I may live to be as old as my grandmother that passed away at 104, <laughs> or I wow. may live to be as old as my parents that passed away at 95, mm -hmm. And then I may I may go to sleep tonight and not wake up. Right. So uh, we we never know. So what what we have to do when we live our daily lives we we have to just expect um, longevity of life is in His hands. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And and to treasure every moment. Really. Very every true. single moment. Every single moment. Well, I know that we have mutual friends, the Bridgmans, and I know that they absolutely adore you. <laughs> and and tell me when you choose the music that you feature on the singing. You know, who who do you who do you really really like? If you said there's a concert I would want to see every time they're in town, who would that be? I'm mm -hmm. a typi typically old time gospel. Me too. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, Blackwood Statesman Spears. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Goodmans, of course, came on later on, mm -hmm. but uh, to me, good old Southern gospel and hymns, mm -hmm. I think it's a tragedy that uh, that we have we have turned our back on hymns. Absolutely, I agree. Which hymns yeah. hymns are a ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your present day Southern gospel is not, although. God's word will never return void, and it'll accomplish that that it's purpose to accomplish. But uh, a lot of your present-day Southern gospel music is more inclined towards entertainment exactly. than ministry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I ju I just love the old time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we play a lot. We um, do. Sometimes I wake up in the morning with with the family or name that has come to me. I don't know who they are, but I've heard the name there there in, in Southern Gospel music. So I'll get on Google and Google and try to locate them. Right. And there's a lot of great young gospel groups out there now that uh, that I think are turning back and leaning towards more of a 
ministry than entertainment. But and that's what it truly was designed to be. I'm, I'm thinking my head the whole time he's been talking, Two Shoes by Archie Watkins right. and the mm -hmm. Inspirations. You talk about a song that touches a mm -hmm. heart because I know so many women, and I'm getting cold chills even thinking about it, who go to church, go to church, go to church. Their husband never darkens the door. Right. Mm -hmm. And this lady from Resaca, Georgia, wrote that song that was her true life story. And her husband finally went to church. And those are the songs that we need to deliver a message. There's hope out there. And I right. write a song today that I want y'all to listen to when we go eat. It's called The Word in Me. And it's mm -hmm. by a group from Ludville, Georgia, which is a little place about this big in Pickens County, but Dorothy Hightower has written over 225 mm -hmm. songs. The Word in Me was a song that was in her head for over 20 years. Wow. And when she wrote it, they were standing here at the set doing the program live, and she sang that, and I couldn't even interview her for 10 minutes. I had to compose myself because it's about never giving up. Mm -hmm. And the gospel songs deliver messages about mm -hmm. that. Really? And we you all know, need hope that's because what we, we live in a hope. troubled world. Yeah, yeah. And so we have to go back to that music mm -hmm. that brings a message of hope. Well, I think it'll happen. Uh, uh, we, I, I look at what is happening in our country and uh, being a born and raised on an Indian reservation in North Dakota, uh, sometimes it really bothers me that, uh, that we opened the door for everybody to come in and be successful. And now it's almost like it's turned around where the only successful people we have are politicians. Mm -hmm. And they forgot about us. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it will, it, it'll turn around the Lord has promised that in the last days He'll bless His people. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I believe it will. I really don't worry about it, but it concerns me. Now, growing up on the Indian Reservation, can we go back to those days? I think Vicki shared with us the last time you were here a, a bit about how your family music started. Can you share the story with I us? I shared uh, with her a little bit about Wally Fowler. I thought yeah. that was interesting. <laughs> um, my um, my father is full blood German. Mm -hmm. Uh, his people came from uh, South Russia in the Ukraine mm -hmm. around Odessa, uh, Russia. And uh, under Catherine the Great, uh, she brought in the Germans to help develop uh, the area around uh, uh, the Baltic Sea there. And uh, then when, her, when she passed on, her son, I'm trying to think of what his name was, uh, he came in and he did a purging, a religious and racial purging. Mm. And so that's when my father's side moved to this country mm -hmm. and they, they homesteaded right on the edge of our Indian reservation. And when my dad was about 13, 12, 13 years old, he was called into the ministry and uh, the Clouts had nine boys and five girls, 14, 14 in the family. 14. So my, my grandfather, Gottlieb Clout, said, uh, Rainey, what do you want to do? Do you want to preach or do you want to farm? He said, and, and Dad was about 12, 13 years old. And uh, so um, Dad said, I want to preach. So Gottlieb, my grandfather, said, well, you're going to have to lose leave the farm. Mm -hmm. So he left the farm and my my dad was raised, the rest of his life was raised by our Indians on the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation in North Dakota. Wow. Dad, dad could speak Russian, he could speak German, and he learned uh, the Arikara language, which is our tribe. Mm -hmm. So he he was fluent in three different languages and he only had a third grade education. Wow. But, wow. Um, That's the power of God. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes. so in, in 1914, two missionaries came from Azuzu in California. And uh, they, came, they landed on, on our Indian reservation. They were there for about three days. 
and uh, they couldn't speak Indian, and the Indians couldn't speak <laughs> English, but but they uh, talked to each other, and that that's when uh, that's when the Pentecostal beginning started on our Indian reservation. Is that not awesome? It is, is awesome. Is that not just awesome? Just an so amazing it, uh, story. That is God's work. Yeah. But our, yeah. But our, um, but our, our reservation, all of our, other than our government, was run by the Catholic Church. So when I was born, uh, the doctor said I wouldn't live to be a year old. And it's interesting mm. that the nuns and the Indians laid hands on me and prayed. And going into 91 years, I'm still here. I think they got it right when they prayed. I think you? so. <laughs> yeah. God yeah. definitely had a plan for right. yeah. Melvin Clout's yeah. life. So now, uh, your mom and your dad, tell us a little bit about their joining and then how that. Well, they, um, um, mom would teach uh, the kids music. Dora, Dora Hall, the missionary that was on our reservation, Dora taught my mother guitar and uh, piano and uh, so mom had her ministry and of course dad 12 13 years old that's where he started his ministry so their paths would cross mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so on um, on separate September the Friday September the 13th 1929 they got married and uh, we were we were all raised on what they refer to as the Little Soldier Ranch in uh, on Fort Berthold in North Dakota. And then we, uh, at age 11, I started singing with the family. Uh, he also played a little music with them. Yeah, and then we, <laughs> we moved, uh, we moved to uh, Tennessee to the uh, Lee Back then it was Lee College, mm -hmm. Church of God Still School, to get is. our education. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got acquainted with uh, Wally Fowler. <laughs> well, Eva May, Eva May My took... Idol. Eva, Eva May LaFever. Eva, Eva May oh took an gosh. interest in, a, in us. And uh, we held revival at that time for Hemp Hill. We'd drive from Cleveland into Atlanta mm -hmm. every evening after school. And... Uh, We'd ho held a revival there, and, and of course the Lefevre Trio was was there, and she took an interest. She invited us the last day of our revival. She revi she invited us to Wally Fowler's singing at the City Auditorium in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. All night singings. That's it was right. Really yeah. all, all night. They singings. were all night. They were all, all night. night. I remember those days. Yes. And um, he thought we were Italian because we wore black. <laughs> black suit. This is a funny story. <laughs> he thought we were Italian. Mobsters. So, uh, <laughs> Mobsters so, somebody, for gospel music. <laughs> somebody told us this. He's back in, in the back area on the phone to spaghetti and lasagna companies. <laughs> <laughs> <That's hysterical. laughs> he said I've got he some really. he said I've got some Italians here. <laughs> I love so, it. So uh, then uh, he he when he found out we were Indians he said well let's <laughs> let's go back to something a little different. <laughs> let's put well, let's put costumes on it. Oh, Lord. So he flew us to North Dakota. Uh, none of us knew how what because all of us wore cowboy boots and jeans mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and so we had to go back. We stayed up there about a week while these old Indians uh, developed some costumes for us. Let's talk about your tribe today. How large is the tribe? Uh, we've probably got, uh, well, there's three tribes on our reservation. There's the uh, Mandans, the Arikaras, and the Hadatsa. And uh, three distinct different languages that's mm -hmm. on our reservation, Fort Berthold Indian Reservation, North Dakota. Uh, but there, uh, we've probably got maybe 10,000. And probably 80 per 90 percent of those Indians live off the reservation, so probably on the reservation we may have only maybe two, three thousand mm -hmm. people. But like every reservation, we've got our casinos and, and gambling. The, the how old is your tribe? What year do you date back to? 
Well, this, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing, Sherry. Uh, the Arikara, the Arikara Indians look more European. Mm -hmm. the, um, the Mandans look more like the Oriental uh, or interesting. the Asian. Uh, oh, so it's, it's, it's interesting that you have the three distinct looks of on on one Indian reservation mm -hmm. and they pretty pretty much kept themselves they haven't intermarried that much they've uh, married outside the reservation so a lot of our Indians uh, married uh, white people but well, tell her about how you and Margie got married in that story <laughs> I like this story. <laughs> Must have Mar been something smart. Sixty-six you know, years together. Uh, when we Go when we this. came to Georgia, they only had eleven year school system, mm -hmm. and I was in the twelfth grade. So, um, so Dad and I were we were digging a septic tank for a family, and I was down in the bottom digging, mm -hmm. and this this guy comes up and says, uh, uh, which. Is, is that Melvin Clout down there? And, and uh, Dad said, yeah. He said, uh, well, he needs to go to school. And, and so I looked up at him and I said, uh, his name was Mr. Williams. I, I said, well, I can't go to school because you don't have a 12th grade. He said, you'll, you'll be in the 12th grade in my office. <laughs> wow. So I'll teach you. So the principal of the school Norcross uh, High School. He taught me in in his oh in his class. So I got acquainted with uh, Margie, and uh, Margie was Miss Norcross, mm -hmm. and they wanted to send her to uh, the state. Mm -hmm. Georgia and, State. No, the I mean the state the pageant. Beauty, right. The beauty the contest. Georgia State right. pageant. Yes. Pageant. Yes. She and was she beautiful. says, No, I want to. I want to stay here. I'm going to marry Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so uh, yeah. 10 days before we graduated, we got married. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and it worked. 66 60, years. 66 years. 66 Margie years. was a beautiful person inside and out. Yes, yeah, she Had a uh, sense of humor like no other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, was, uh, she, she was one of the smartest women. Funny. She really was. Yes. And I believe she was either prom queen or homecoming queen or something like that at school too. Yeah, she was Miss mm -hmm. Norcross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the, for the husband. And husk. they wanted to send her to the state pageant, mm -hmm. but uh, she said, no, I'm going to marry Melvin. <laughs> so how many years did you travel as a family singing? Uh, as a family, probably from, from 20, 1929 to, um, to 1982, wow. and then we retired. Wow. You summer. earned a retirement after that. Yeah. Yeah. But we uh, probably 10 or 15 years before that, Sherry, we, we, we actually just worked weekends in summer. So we, 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 we made about a 15-year a transition. Mm -hmm. And um, two, of my, um, two of my brothers, Raymond and Vernon, uh, they retired with 30 years of service in the um, school system. Mm. So uh, they're, they're really, I'm the dummy in the family. <laughs> yeah, right. I hated school. <laughs> but he's had many, many businesses yes, over the years. Yes, yes, but yes, Marge yes. is the one that had all the certificates. Yeah. She kept going to school. She yeah. loved it. Yeah, yeah Marge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to get to know a little bit more about this amazing family, and I hope we're going to be able to share some of their music with you. So y'all hang tight. We'll be right back. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. 
Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Now, you and I have something in common besides WATC-TV. I love WATC. I was on there for years. Absolutely loved it. But also, I love Wherever Cookware. <laughs> now, is there a rumor that you might have sold a little Wherever Cookware? When, uh, when we retired completely, uh, I asked Mar my wife, Marjorie, I said, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> She uh, she was working for a um, insurance company downtown, and uh, I said, "What am, what am I going to do?" So I answered an ad in the paper, wherever cookware. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I, I went on to to sell that, and I'd knock on doors, <laughs> set up my appointments, and uh, so. I don't know, I, after probably about the eighth or ninth steak that I cooked, baked potato and steak, mm -hmm. uh, this guy looked at me, he said, um, he said, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, that's the worst steak I've <laughs> ever eaten. <laughs> he said, but I like your presentation. So he hired me. I had an office down t downtown, and uh, he set me up in insurance. How funny! So uh, <laughs> I can't I can't even think of the name of the insurance company. That is hysterical. But uh, but then for th when they closed the office down in downtown Atlanta and moved it back to New York, um, then I spun off into a company by the name of Pre Preferred Risk. Mm -hmm which was a, they specialized in church insurance. Mm -hmm. And so from there, that's how I got my start in construction. The secret to my life is... So if you hadn't failed as a state cook, yeah, <laughs> what, where would he have been today? I believe you had an insurance agency in Rome, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Melvin? But, but I... Um, he did Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I had two offices. I had one on, uh, on uh, I-85, just mm -hmm. off on I-85, and then I also had an office in Rome. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd drive, uh, I had a girl at, in the Rome office that uh, took care of all of the insurance, but she couldn't sign off on a new policy. 
so she, she would have maybe four or five policies there, and she'd call me and say, "I have you have to come and sign, mm -hmm. s sign these uh, papers." So I drive to Rome and sign the papers, and then hard job, mm -hmm. hard so, job, yeah, really. <laughs> but uh, my secret, Sherry, was um, I never ne said no to anything, and. Uh, Back in those days, they had uh, in, in in property insurance. They had what they had the the eighty twenty clause, and if you were eighty percent insured, they'd have to pay a hundred percent of the claim. But if you were seventy nine percent, then they only paid seventy nine percent of the claim. Mm -hmm. And so the the guy that had it up. The preferred risk office said, uh, "Can you reevaluate all these properties and bring conform them to the eighty percent coinsurance clause?" Mm -hmm. I, I said, "Yeah, I can do it." I didn't even have a tape measure, <laughs> <laughs> and you did it. And so what I did uh, for about two years, all I did was went to every church that they had insured in Georgia. And I'd measure them, bring them back in, and that's how I got into construction. Wow. Uh, a couple of churches said, uh, we're getting ready to build a, uh, an addition to our church. Can you do that? And I said, oh, yeah. I didn't even have a hammer. <laughs> but, uh, I love your attitude. <laughs> but I, always like that. But I built the churches, uh, and that's how I got into construction. Wow. And, uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy cool. That's but, crazy cool. You know, I I look back on my life, Cherry. Uh, my mother. I was I, I was an accident waiting to happen. I was at, right in the middle of five kids, and my mother would always say, "If the Lord will say, Chief, call me Chief." If the Lord would say chief, he'll save anybody. <laughs> so I was kind of an accident waiting to happen. And the other the other day I was thinking, you know, the Lord the Lord promised to take our sins and bury it in the depths of the sea. Mm -hmm. But he didn't say that he would bury our history. And I, I got to thinking about that, and I got, I got to thinking about David, King David. King David's life started with nudity, and then it went to lust, and then from lust it went to adultery. From adultery, it went to an Ill, illegitimate child. And then out of that relationship with Bathsheba uh, came Solomon. And Solomon built the first temple. Not only did he build the first temple, but he united the Israeli nation. So he, uh, I have never heard a message on the first chapter of Matthew, never. And I've been, I've been listening to ministers all, all my life, and I've never heard of a ministry on Matthew, the first chapter, which is the begat. And that's a history of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So history is very important. Uh, people want to forget their history, mm -hmm. but that's yeah. the foundation of who they are. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Their sins are gone, uh, but but that history is is the begat process of their life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's the foundation. That's my foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, a, I'm more excited about my life now than I've ever been. I, I go to bed and just, 
Say, Father, if, if this is the night, here I am. Here I am. If I, when I wake up in the morning, I, I say, here, uh, blessed with another day. Mm-hmm. And I've got a prayer list. Vicky's on my prayer list. Her parents are on it. Um, I've got a prayer list of probably 50, 60 people that have asked me to pray for them. Mm-hmm. And I go through that list twice a day. Can we talk about your remaining family? What, what are they doing and what's the situation? Um, my sister's 92. She's in her 92nd year, and she lives about uh, 15 minutes from me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've is she got healthy? A, is she healthy? Yeah, she's... she's she worked uh, till... Out. She she worked until two years ago. Mm-hmm. Wow. She mani- managed, yeah, she's healthy. <laughs> she managed a real estate company mm-hmm. uh, office. Uh, and then I've got a brother that lives about half an hour from me, the youngest brother. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my brother, just younger than myself, lives in uh, California. And um, he's out there. Bless him. Bless him, Lord. That's right. Bless him, Lord. He's, he's our left. He's our left wing guy. Oh, oh no! Keep him in California. Let me ask you something. As when you traveled as a family, we see the big tour buses. How did your family travel in music? We, um, when we first started, we bought two uh, two limousine Cadillacs. Mm-hmm. They call, I think they called them the seventy five series. And uh, we traveled in two Cadillacs. And then uh, we downsized to, t- to three other vehicles. And we used that. And then um, we were one of the first people to buy, um, buy a bus. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think we bought a bus before any of them did because we did mission work on Indian rev- reservations and we had tent equipment we had uh, two semi trucks that had all of the seating, the tent, mm-hmm. and uh, we bought those just for the purpose of ministering on the Indian reservations. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we we sold all of that equipment and uh, bought bus. We had uh, four buses. We had uh, the old Beck, which was the first one. And then we had a Silver Sides. Then we bought a 4104, a 4106, and a 4903. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, and then the 4903 was what we referred to as the big buffalo. It, the other buses were 35 feet, and the buffalo was uh, 40 foot. Who drove them? Did one of you drive? We, you we even our, our our wives drove. Oh wow, that is hysterical. Our wives drove, but we took two-hour shifts. So if if we took a trip to California, you know that may have been been a three-day mm-hmm. right. drive, mm-hmm. and uh, so our our wives would would drive. I don't know that I've ever heard of a gospel group that would put their wife under the wheel <laughs> and go back there and go to sleep. If you're probably not. That, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. So. The funny thing was, <laughs> back in those days, we had what we called the CBs. Mm-hmm. I remember we and, were in the uh, trucking business. And I we, all, we always had either. that on. Yeah. And it would be interesting, uh, we'd, we'd uh, pass a, a semi or semi would travel past us, and the, the g- driver of the truck would say, there's a beaver driving that bus. <laughs> <laughs> Call us a beaver. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> that's what a woman is. That's right. That's right. We're going to take a music break, and we're going to go to one gospel song right now because we can't do a show without a little bit of gospel music. So we're going to fill a little gospel. bit of music right now. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, a grand old gospel welcome for the Clout Indian family. I appreciate that fine applause, and I can tell you right from the onset that after you took my country, I forgive you now after that good applause. You are forgiven. And tonight it's a real treat to have Mama out here of all of the gospel groups that you see on television known as the old-timers. 
This is the only group that has been singing in the gospel singing circuit where all of the original members, God has given us the privilege, this is Thanksgiving, that every one of us still is alive. Is not the Lord good? And my mama, who is 90 and going on 91, is going to sing for you a song that she learned at the Indian Mission, the first gospel song. And she is going to sing it for you in her native language of the Indian tribe of the Arikaras from the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation. Okay, Mom. Oh, Jesus, Neshanu Dini Vetata Nusteya Vetata Tiska Asi Wanu Ahri Nanisha Akhira Nanisha How about it, Mama Indian, 90 and going on 91. God love you, Mama. And here's just part of Mama's 10 Little Indians. Thou art strong Jesus keep me From all the wrong And I'll be satisfied As long As I walk Let me walk Close to Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk with thee. Daily walking close to 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 thee. Let it be. Just a closer walk. Let it be. Just a closer walk with me. Just a closer walk. A closer Just a closer walk. walk with thee. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk. Granted, Jesus, Jesus is my plea. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking, walk with thee. Daily a closer walk with thee. Daily walking close to thee. Daily walking close to thee. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be just a closer walk, just a closer walk, just a closer walk with me. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go along till the Lord comes and calls. Yes, that I am. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, there will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. Oh, Lord, I pray.
How about it from Honest Little Indians? And now a song written by our youngest brother. Lord, a touch, a touch of your hand. Your hand, a touch of his mighty hand. My tears may fall, tears may fall, and pain may grow, and pain may grow. Deep in my soul, in my soul, I have some shepherd chief, and I am his, and with him I want not. He throws out to be a rope, and the name of the rope is love, and he draws me to where the grass is green, and the water is not dangerous, and I lie down satisfied. Now sometimes my heart is weak and falls down, but he lifts it up again and draws me into a good road. His name is Wonderful. Sometime it may be very soon. And it may be longer and it may be a long time. He will draw me to a place between those mountains. It is dark here, but I shall draw not back. I shall be afraid not, for it is between those mountains that the shepherd chief will meet me. And the hunger that I have felt in my heart through all this life will be satisfied. Now sometimes he makes this rope of love into a whip. But afterwards, he gives me a staff to lean upon. He spreads a table before me with all kinds of good food. He puts his hand upon my head, and all the tired is gone. My cup he fills till it runs over. What I tell is true, doubt not. These roads that are away ahead will stay with me through all this life. And then afterwards I will go to live in the big teepee, and will sit down and rest with the shepherd's seat forever and forevermore. Let 
me linger, dear master. Draw me close to thy heart from the shady green pastures. I will never depart, never more shall I walk. gospel music. There's just something about it. If you love gospel music, you need to tune in to WATC Channel 57 in Atlanta. Vicki, tell us the time that your program's on. We were on Saturdays at 1 o'clock and then we're on Sundays at 3 o'clock every week. Mm -hmm. And it's and from you, 30 minute program. You deliver a message from the Bible. Right. And the boss here, the chief, chooses the music. Is that right? He does. Well, and then we talk back and forth. Oh. Uh, and and uh, Vicky kind of helps me. She uh, she goes to a lot of singings, and she emcees pro mm -hmm. gospel singing programs. Right. So uh, she runs into some singers that I I don't have access to. Mm -hmm. So she'll pick up some music. He's using you. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting, and I love every minute of it. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but, uh, I, know. I love he's such when you work man. together. He's I love man. that you have complimented each other. But our, yeah. our TV program uh, on the October the 10th of this year will go into its 14th year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's reputed to be the longest running Southern Gospel music program on it history mm -hmm. and uh, Wikipedia has even specified uh, October the 10th as National Just Keep Singing Day. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it's uh, it's one of the things that the, the program, um, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Bobby Thomas. At WATC? No, Bobby yeah. Thomas, Bobby. Bobby Thomas produced WSB's evening news program oh, no. for years and he also produced the Popeye Club. Oh, <laughs> I was on the Popeye Club. Were you? <laughs> I was old enough to be on the Popeye Club. So, yeah. Bob, so you you met Officer Bobby Don. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Don. Yeah. yeah. You, so you, you, you probably <coughs> met know it. and yeah. didn't know it. But Bobby Thomas, uh, we, we did uh, the annual Vernon, my brother and my sister and myself, did the Lay's Potato Chip uh, Christmas program every year for several years. Wow. And Bobby Thomas's wife was, uh, was the head secretary at Lay's Potato Chip on Peachtree Industrial. Mm -hmm. So she kept telling Bobby, you gotta, <coughs> you gotta hear these kids. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just great. So, uh, we did the whole program a cappella, wow. all the Christmas pro songs. And uh, so Bobby Thomas took an interest in, in us and he and I produced probably four or five pilot Southern Gospel programs mm -hmm. that never got off the ground. Wow. And uh, we, we, we just couldn't figure that out. So uh, when, when I got the call to uh, do a TV program at WATC, uh, I called Bobby, and Bobby produced the first probably three or four years of the Just Keep Singing program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he got, his wife got sick, and he and his wife passed away probably six months apart. Wow, but, how uh, sad. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, that's how the program got started. Mm -hmm. We play a lot of older Southern Gospel music. As well which as is some what of, we want to hear. Which is what yeah, a lot of people yeah, like, something yeah. different. We do play some current, but we do yeah. play a lot of the older music, which I really enjoy. Yeah, but we, um, we, we kind of key in on a, a, on a song, and, and that's uh, Vicki's responsibility to pick the song, and then, then she goes through her 
meticulous <laughs> background of everything. <laughs> and I'm sitting over there. But uh, she blesses me. I. It goes both ways, Chief. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very blessed. Absolutely. But and what a great thing to have WATC, who still delivers a product right. that we want to continue with. You know, that's that's so important because in television today, yeah, we need a little bit of gospel. Mm, we do. Well, I'm on the board of directors there. That uh, we were great friends of the people that started not only uh, WGGS TV in Greenville, but we but were also, on there too. Yes. But also uh, WATC. And we also have a station in Savannah, a little bolt station in Savannah. But um, uh, the Thompsons, we we for years sang at their church mm -hmm. in Taylorsville. Uh, and uh, now that is the Bible Belt. Yeah. I've been there. That's the mm -hmm. Bible Belt. <laughs> but we, um, he. Um, he called me and said, have you ever thought about doing a TV program? And I kind of, I kind of laughed and I said, yeah, probably for 50 years. <laughs> Just a little bit. He said, Might well, have had a thought or two. Just shows said, God's timing. Yes, yeah. So he yeah. said, what's, what's the problem? I said, well, I'm, I'm involved with, with my construction real estate company and, and uh, I just don't have the time and then I also said, James, uh, uh, it costs money. He said, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so that's. There you go. So 10, 10, 10. In 2010, we started the program. Wow, wow. Well, congratulations on this long run, and I hope that our viewers will tune in to WATC. TV Channel 57, you can see it with ETC. That is one of the great programs that we do offer. Um, and, and that is what it's about, bringing what, we have folks sitting at home, and I, I got so tickled. I was interviewing a guy last week. He was 87 years old. I think he just turned 87. His opinions were very much like mine. And I had to edit out just a tiny bit because a tiny bit might have offended somebody. Right. And I got tickled because I said the tiny bit that would have offended anybody, 99% of my viewers would have agreed with all of it. <laughs> so, so we're thankful for your generation, for my generation, for your generation, for all of us to get together and say there's right. so much good in America that we want to share. And, and it's I the agree. music, the history the true history of America. And I just have to throw this out at y'all. If you were sadly saw the interview that our vice president, that person, mm -hmm. went to Florida yesterday and blew her little gasket and, and called them liars and what they're teaching in Florida, do your homework. It is not a lie. They are gonna teach a curriculum that is the true history of the United States. You cannot change the history. You cannot change the past. You have to live with it, and we will live with everything that's ever happened in America. We're going to make better tomorrow, but we live with the history of yesterday. Right. Because you can't change history. Why would we want to? You Why know, would we want to? Jerry, no, none right. of us are victims. No, 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 no absolutely but, not. But, uh, but they're, try they're trying to teach us that... My family's German, for goodness sake. That, that, that every everybody it. is a victim. Yeah, right. yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's, it's sad and it's sickening, but... Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you very much for, for coming it. and and for him. He drove himself from Lawrenceville, Georgia, today, y'all. We, you know, that's a long ride. So it we're going to take him to Mike's for lunch. So here we go. <laughs> Hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again soon, only on ETC. Bye, y'all. Bye, bye.